Ladies and gentlemen, the Chiefs were crying on Christmas and the Raiders were crying on Christmas, but for very different reasons. This game may have ended Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift's fake relationship. I think I may have seen her leaving with Jimmy Garoppolo. And after this victory in Kansas City, the Raiders may have officially found their future head coach in Antonio Pierce. We're going to break this down. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content from me, Wi-Fi Willie, and Merry Christmas. The Raiders defeated the Kansas City Chiefs. This was absolutely amazing. This was not a Christmas miracle because the Raiders defense absolutely dominated Kansas City. So much where Patrick Mahomes was tearing up a little, little crying, a little emotional after the game, biting the lip. He could not hold it in. It was just breaking this man apart. On the flip side, this Taylor Swift BS is finally coming to an end. She looked upset, grabbing Brittany Mahomes right here. I don't know if Travis Kelsey's still going to be in a relationship relationship with this woman after this horrible performance by him. The Raiders defense had Travis Kelsey so shook early in the game, the guy is slamming his freaking helmet on the ground in the sidelines. They literally had the man losing his mind. On the flip side, you had Antonio Pierce also getting emotional, but for very different reasons. The interim head coach was almost tearing up, almost crying in the post-game interview. He knows what this win means for the team and also for his future with the Raiders. It's tough. He said enough is enough. Guys came. We said we had a squeeze. It's going to take all 60 minutes. It did. He's usually a very loud and flavorful guy. And this time he was a little quiet, a little soft spoken. I think he was holding a lot of emotions back. The cherry on top of this is Jack Jones, the man who Antonio Pierce had coached in high school at Long Beach Poly and then in college at Arizona State and now in the NFL. This guy had an amazing pick six against Patrick Mahomes, was staring at the man. And we got this graphic right here that the Raiders posted. Everybody counted the Raiders out. Everybody said they're going to lose this game from Daniel Jeremiah to Adam Rank. Not one person chose the Raiders to win this game on the NFL Network. This was hands down my favorite moment of the game. Jack Jones during that pick six that we just mentioned straight up looked look like he was going to hand a football to a child who's a Chiefs fan after getting the pick six. But no, 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 not so fast. Oh, he's going to grab it. No, no, denied, roasted that little ass Chiefs kid on Christmas. I freaking love it. Not only was the pick six amazing by Jack Jones, but the fact that he roasted this kid on top of it, roasted Patrick Mahomes on top of it, that makes me freaking love this guy. They need to re-sign him ASAP. And the fact that Antonio Pierce looks like he may be turning this into more of a full-time role, this bodes well for Jack Jones. And Andy Reid, he had himself a horrible game calling the offense. I think this guy is declining. I joked around at first, but I think this is serious. I think the weight for Andy Reid is getting in the way of his play calling. The stress is coming in on him. He cannot deliver a great play call. And it really showed in this game, the big man was getting made fun of by Nickelodeon. They were doing the virtual claw. I don't think Andy Reid liked that because he was in a metaphorical claw. The Raiders had him locked up all game. The Chiefs were so all over the place that Pacheco, the running back, couldn't even sit on the sideline on a little bench here. It collapsed instantly. They look like the real joke of a franchise in the AFC West. Patrick Mahomes is losing his swagger. Who knows if it's the fact that Jackson Mahomes has not been featured too much on the sideline. A lot of Taylor Swift these days. I think maybe Patrick is going to need to bring back Jackson if he wants to turn his career around. This game could have been even better for the Raiders. They could have won by even more points. We'll get into the offensive struggles, but right here you have it. Matt Max Crosby being held like crazy. You could see this. Everybody was talking about it during the game. He didn't have a shot. He could have got even more sacks and more pressures on Mahomes, but the refs were, of course, helping the Chiefs out as much as they can on Christmas, but it looks like Santa Claus didn't want it to happen. And right here, man, this was like the worst hold I've ever seen happen for Max Crosby, and that's a bold statement because he's been held so much. I mean, they literally were holding him behind his back. This is absolutely disgusting and a little suggestive. And Chiefs fans are so spoiled. They don't even know how to support their team. They couldn't handle the Raiders straight up whooping their ass at halftime. And you had the booze come out at halftime as the Raiders entered the locker room here. You love to hear this. Kansas City talk about a magician. They like to call David Copperfield and have this first half disappear. 
<laughs> they would love that first half to disappear. They would like this whole game to disappear. And I think the Chiefs would like this whole season to disappear. The defense obviously held this team together and won this game for the Raiders. They scored two touchdowns back to back, one strip sack fumble for a touchdown early in the game. They had this pick that was overturned. This was absolute BS that this was overturned. Yeah, bobbled a little bit when he hit the ground, but it was ruled a catch on the field and his arm was still under it. And he still had control of it when he got that pick, but they overturned the pick, took away the interception from the guy. And honestly, this could have been a greater performance for the Raiders defense, but the refs had to ref it. And Trayvon Merrick did not hold back celebrating on Instagram after the game. He was having a blast here. We're still Christmas, motherfucker. We're still Christmas, motherfucker. It looks like the Raiders were the Grinch today out there in Arrowhead. You can tell morale is boosting for the Raiders when you got the cigars coming out again in the locker room. The celebration is happening again. People are stoked. People are happy about this. Max Crosby roasting one up in the locker room. Not only Max Crosby, but I thought Malcolm Koontz had an amazing game as a pass rusher. He was able to get a sack on Patrick Mahomes as well. There's so much pressure on Mahomes and he was able to escape and scramble, but the defense was absolutely amazing. The defense never, ever slipped up, even though the offense was not doing them too many favors. Aiden O'Connell did have a rough game today, the quarterback of the Raiders and Bo Hardigree, the offensive play caller. Keep in mind, Devontae Adams only had one catch for four yards. I'm sorry. That's unacceptable. At one point, Aiden O'Connell, according to ESPN stats here, went 0 for 10 and he was the first rookie quarterback to beat Mahomes despite the fact that at one point he had 10 incomplete passes in a row. But hey, Aiden O'Connell technically still made history first rookie QB to beat Patty Mahomes. O'Connell is humble and he admitted it, man. He says it was a team win. Those guys carried me. It was awesome. The defense did such a great job. So at least he's not delusional. He's owning the fact that he needs to perform better. The offense needs to perform better. But one side of the offense that did well was the running game. Zamir White. This young man was absolutely balling out and helped close out the victory for the Raiders towards the end of the game. They're able to run the clock out. Victory formation and Josh Jacobs giving props to Zamir White after the game saying Zeus is a bad mother effer. A lot of mother effers going around now. This time it's a positive one. But think about that. The fact that Josh Jacobs was not even in this game. The Raiders would have done even better. And hopefully the Raiders in these last two games against the Colts and the Broncos utilize a combination of Josh Jacobs and Zamir White. That would be an amazing one-two punch that could seriously cause some trouble for some defenses considering the fact that the passing game isn't exactly going well right now. This brings us to the future and what to expect next. Obviously the Raiders can still make the playoffs. They could even still win the division if Kansas City loses their last two games. The Chiefs will be playing the Bengals and Chargers next. I don't expect the Chargers to beat them. Maybe the Bengals catch them slipping. That's a possibility. But the Raiders can still make the wild card, especially if the Texans lose and the Steelers lose in these next upcoming two weeks. The Raiders just got to continue winning. Hope that Seattle beats the Steelers. The Steelers are going downhill. That's definitely possible. They got to hope that Tennessee beats the Jags and that Houston beats Indianapolis. Honestly, they don't need that because the Raiders are going to play Indianapolis next week. And then hopefully Baltimore beats Pittsburgh at the end of the year. Either way, the Raiders went out. Either way, the Raiders went out. They got a 66% chance to make the playoffs and it gets even better if some of these things happen. I think it could happen. I think seriously, this team showed they're really competitive on defense. Probably one of the best defensive teams in the NFL. And I never thought I'd say that as a Raiders fan with how poorly the defense has been over the past few years, but it's happening and it's real right now. I think the main reason why Antonio Pierce was so emotional after the game is he knows that he probably won this job. Job. He went out there, had the biggest win in franchise history against the Chargers on Thursday night football, and then goes and beats the defending Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, the next week in Arrowhead. How was that not great for his resume as a head coach? We know his style of head coach is closer to Mike Tomlin and Dan Campbell. He's not a big X's and O's guru guy on either side of the football field, but he is somebody who can motivate the guys. He really showed that he could do it enough to beat one of the better teams in the AFC. Mark Davis referred to him as a leadership style of coach, and it seems like the only problems the Raiders have right now is offensive coordinator and maybe quarterback. Perhaps O'Connell just needs more time, but I think quarterback will be something that they address in the offseason. Either way, sky's the limit for Antonio Pierce this year if he continues to win out. I believe they will beat the Colts next week, 10 a.m. on New Year's Eve. I will be live during that game with Dial Up Audrey. And then also the following week against the declining Denver Broncos. I anticipate the Raiders will get the dub then. And Antonio Pierce definitely should be the head coach 
after this. And I think a lot of the players would be stoked about this because it means that there's not a rebuild. I think some players were worried about the fact that, hey, is this going to be a rebuild again? We're going to get a new coach, have to reshuffle everything. Devontae Adams is probably thinking about his future. But if Pierce makes the playoffs in a position where he really didn't have that much of a shot, still dealing with Josh McDaniel's squad, Josh McDaniel's schemes, but he has been able to make it happen so far. If Mark Davis doesn't hire this guy after all of this, I think the fans would be absolutely livid. Let me know in the comments below if you think Antonio Pierce should be the full-time head coach. I believe so. Give Antonio Pierce a shot, Mark Davis. I think you should do it. Give the guy a three-year deal. Maybe we got to bring some more competition at quarterback and be a defensive run game team similar to the Niners. There ain't nothing wrong with that. And I'm so happy that we had this Christmas miracle. I did not want it to be a typical Raiders versus Chiefs game where it's shitty as hell for us Raiders fans. We got to celebrate today. Have fun with your families on Christmas. I am right now as well. I got the Santa hat on. I got the lights on. And I got the eggnog. And despite the fact that I've had a lot of eggnog, I haven't slurred my words so far. Let me know in the comments below also if you think Aiden O'Connell is the guy at quarterback. Do you want to give this guy time to develop? Or should the Raiders bring in some more competition? I want to hear from you. Like this this video if you have not yet and subscribe to this channel for more Raiders content. We'll be pumping out more stuff all week and live during the next Raiders game. Peace out and I hope you have a good one.